God is good. I, I, I just, I'm just overwhelmed tonight. I was sitting there thinking, patting my pockets. I say, I wonder if I owe the elders the same amount I had to pay Starks last night for saying, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm grateful to you guys. And what they say is a hum makes you humble. And I'm not, I'm not Brother Campbell or Starks. I'm not, I'm not a weeping willow. But they sure draw, <laughs> they sure brought the tears. Uh, I'm grateful to them for those kind words. Uh, I'm just grateful to God that uh, I'm able to do what I do. And I, 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 I tell you, I'm not tired yet. Uh, it's. It's good to be able to look out and see that God has blessed your fruits. And uh, it just makes you so overwhelmed with joy to see where God, ha God has carried, not coffee boy, God has carried this work. And I'm just glad to be able to come back. I know I will, let you, I, 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 I'm buying back my time from last night. Now I gave you 15 minutes or so last night. Cause I've got a lot to say on my heart, but I, I'm, I am grateful to the elders. Uh, these, uh, and, and I tell, in fact, I had a conversation today. These are two of the finest elders in the city of Jacksonville. Brother uh, Willie Crosby and Brother Ronnie Denson are fine. They have the church at heart, and uh, I like to hear them speak when they speak. In our meetings, they portray what God wants an elder to portray in leading his people. So I'm grateful to them. And I want the church to know that I'm grateful to them. Uh, the other thing is, this brings back, and I told somebody, I said, this is almost like doing a full gospel meeting. Uh, the, um, I don't want to talk. These folks had us up early this morning, going and eating breakfast. And you know what, me and Dot ate too. We really did. We, we ate, we, we laid back and pat our bellies after we got through. And we just had a great fellowship early this morning through breakfast and brother and sister White, we're so grateful to you for, for getting us up and getting us started. God bless you. <laughs> Appreciate it so much. Uh, and Elder Denson, I didn't know you were going to re uh, remember that title. I'm going to sing this later. I got to get started because for some reason I do feel like preaching a little bit. Uh, I want you to go back to Hebrew. And I want to read a little more to that. And then I want to kind to point out what I'm going to try to achieve tonight in the few minutes that we're going to spend together. Uh, but this was a great lesson. I'm going to deviate somewhat from this, I'm telling you, but I will be doing it with scripture. And, uh, but the writer, interesting. He says, wherefore, holy brethren, Partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle. And I want you to notice that apostle is singular. And it's capital. He says, so consider the apostle. The high priest of our profession. Jesus Christ. He says, who was faithful to him that appointed him as also Moses was faithful in all his house. Are you on the line? He says, as Moses was faithful in all his house. Not all his houses. Is that okay? Who was faithful to appoint him, uh, and, and Moses was faithful in all his house. He said, for this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. 
inasmuch as he had built the house, had more honor than the house. The, had more honor than the house. Every house is built by some man. Now, in the original text, the word man is not there. Every house is built by somebody. But he that builds all things is God. And Moses was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after it. But Christ as a son over his own house. Whose house are we? If we hold fast the confession and the rejoicing of the hope, firm unto the end. What a powerful statement. And so what I want to preach tonight is a house is not a home without Jesus. Amen. On Mount Olive, sacred ground, Jesus spent the night in prayer. Uh, he's a pattern for us all, all alone. Uh, if we only steal away uh, in some portion other day uh, we will find it always pay to be alone oh there are like to be all along with Christ my Lord I can tell him all my trouble all alone all along, uh, there are days I like to be all along with Christ, my Lord. I can tell him all my trouble all along. Oh, there are days I like to be oh, with the saintly Bright and blessed, uh, there are days I like to be all alone. These can never grace impart unto my weary, sinful heart. Uh, there are days I like to be uh, just all alone. Oh, there are days I like to be all alone with Christ, my Lord. I can tell you all my trouble all alone. All alone. Oh, there are days I like to be all alone with Christ, my Lord. I can tell him all my trouble all alone. Oh, where a heart is broken up, oh, when the bitter wolf will come, oh, there's a time to go to cry. All alone uh, in a blessed Lord divine, uh, there is peace and joy sublime. Uh, when we take our sorrows all uh, to Him alone, uh, there are days. All along with Christ, my Lord, I can tell him all my trouble all alone. Oh, there are days like me all 
along with Christ my Lord. I can tell him all my trouble all along. Oh, there are days like the beam all along with Christ my Lord. I can tell him all my trouble all alone, all alone. Uh, there are days I like to be all alone with Christ my Lord. I can tell him all our trouble all alone. Amen. If I can, to expedite, I want to comment on those verses I read, and then I want to make a shift. But the writer is writing to Jewish Christians who are experiencing deep hardship, and they are being tried. They're Christianity is being tried for their confession, and many of them want to go back into Judaism. And so the writer is trying to express the importance of recognizing who Jesus Christ is, and that's why he uses the term, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. And so tonight, church, I want us to consider what it is that Jesus wants. He goes on to say that Moses was a builder of his house. Moses was a resident of the house. Jesus is the builder of the house. It's a difference between the resident and the builder. The resident might purchase the house, but he didn't build it. The builder of the house knows all of its accessories. And so to this day, Jesus is still the builder of the house. Not your residence where you live, but the house that is developed for salvation, the church. Jesus is the builder of the house. So a house is not a home if it doesn't have Jesus. But more than that, when Christ is really the head of our homes, each of us express or should be able to express our love to the tenants in our home. We are to be able to have a changed attitude. You know, love changes things. When you love something, you don't abuse it, nor do you mistreat it. You, you lift it up, you nourish it, and you cherish it. And so he said, uh, in our homes, in our, in our physical homes that we live in, the, the church ought to be a microcosm of what our homes is. Our homes should reflect what Jesus was trying to instill and what he did instill in the church. One of the things that we need to recognize is how do we make that change in our physical aspect today? We are Christians. Uh, we're, we're Christians, our spirit represents, but it's still a struggle. The struggle, church, is real. And so I want to give us a few pointers tonight to help us to, to make the change and make it stick. Many of us have made the change, but we're struggling. And every one of us struggle, just like these folks here that the Hebrew write, writer is writing to in Hebrew they really made a, a switch from Judaism, and now they're about to apostate and go back. They want to take the past the least resistance. And that's what Satan will show us in our everyday walk. It's easier to go back. Satan wants you back. Satan wants your home back. He doesn't want you to have a peaceful home, a loving home. He wants to sow seeds of discord, tear your home up. Any way that he can do that. And so what we have to learn is how can I equip myself? As I said last night, I want to repeat this. 
uh, I told you last night, you, I can't change my spouse. The only person I can change is me. And if you want to know the truth, it's a task changing me. I see why I can't change her. I, I can't change me. I'll decide within the content of my own self that I'm going to do better. And at the moment, I really intend to do better. I keep telling myself over and over, you can get by this, you can do this. And then for some reason, Satan will open the floodgates and the very thing I said that I was going to get better at, I start back in square one. And it's all over again. So it's the best I can do to try to work with me. Sometimes we see that. Sometimes we don't see it. And those that don't see it are doomed to fail over and over again. Let me give you a couple of scriptures. You ought, to, you ought to be able to write some of these down. One of the things is that we have to defy the way. We have to understand. We have to, that the Lord has already provided a way for us to get better. Scripture uh, is strong. In, 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 in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Let's listen at what Jesus says here. And I want to I take my time and kind of explain. Uh, in Matthew 5, 48, Jesus said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now what Jesus is saying is not that we're going to not ever make a mistake. Amen. I don't care how hard you try. Satan knows where to set the roadblocks. He knows where to set the stumbling blocks. But he's saying, be complete. Make that your aim. Make that your goal. And that has to be a daily, when, when the Lord allows you to put your feet on the floor, each one, that has to be your aim each day. That I'm going to get better at what I do. That's your aim. That's your goal. And Jesus said, be ye perfect, not be complete. And in other words, to, to draw the line of completeness, you'll have to lay off some things. Now, this is going to be a full struggle. But it's possible. You know how I know it's possible? Because God said it. If it wasn't possible, he wouldn't have said it. So we can achieve this level, but we have to get out of ourselves. And, and watch what Paul said. Paul comes in. Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, Paul said, and I press. You remember that text, that scripture? Paul said, and I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. There's another one. You can't press without making an effort. Amen. You can't just get up one morning and say, you know, I'm going to press today. And then go sit down in the recliner and watch CNN. You ain't doing much pressing. No, pressing involves action. You may, now pressing might involve, you may, you, rather than read a scripture when you get up, you may have to read a whole passage and then make that passage applicable to you to help you to change if you're going to press. Because remember now, a house is not a home without Jesus. Without Jesus, our homes are absent. We, we, it's not a home, it's just a house. And you know what a house is? Just a shell of protection from the elements, not from Satan. If we need protection from Satan, we're gonna to have to have Jesus. So he said, he said uh, don't just press. He said, when you press uh, in the high calling, set your standards high. Many times we can't overcome some obstacles because we don't have our standards set very high. We gotta set standards high and shoot for the stars. That's what they do in the world. How come we as Christians, well, our, our God, he's alive. Amen. And 
Jesus. And the writer said that he is the, the apostle. He's the high priest. He's the profession of our faith. Set our bar, set the bar high. He said, and when we do that, while we are doing that, don't you know God has his eyes on us? He's watching us through this. And then I want to say, once we understand and define that way, we have to learn to walk in it. Don't do any good to set the bar high and don't try to walk to achieve it. Walking indicates an action. Anybody ever walk and didn't do any action? I know uh, I can tell you this, uh, since the Lord's allowed me to have a couple more birthdays, just a couple more. I, when I was younger, Danny, I could run up and down these steps three or four times and not even, not even uh, break a sweat. Now I got to take my time. I got to make sure I'm solid coming up the steps. And what I'm saying when, it, when we talk about walking, I'm talking about being sure of what you're doing. Don't, don't run to it. Take your time. We walk. Uh, the Bible tells us to walk in the law, and this indicates an action. Walking is something that carries one step after the other. Not only is it an action, but it's a consistent action. And then Deuteronomy 8, chapter 8, verse 6 says, Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thou God, to walk in his ways and to fear him. If you fear him, you're going to walk in his ways. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to fall. God himself realized we were going to fall uh, because that's we're in the flesh. We're in the flesh. And the Bible declares in Galatians, it's a constant battle. It's flesh versus spirit. Even when you go back and look at I rehearsed Paul, I had to rehearse what he did there in Romans chapter 7. Paul said, the things that I, I know I should be doing, he said, I don't do them. But the things I shouldn't be doing, he said, that's what I do. He says, no more than me, than sin that dwell within me. And, and that's a challenge, brethren. That's a challenge, church. That's, that's why we have to look at this. Paul writes, uh, Peter writes, 2 Peter rather, chapter 3, verse 14. He says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look uh, for such things, be diligent. In other words, be consistent. Have a plan. Uh, if you're going to have Jesus in you, be consistent with it. Read, if you're reading scripture, if you're praying together, if you're loving together, be consistent. Don't fall out of love. Because you had to have hot dogs tonight. <laughs> he said, Beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot, without blameless. And uh, one, of, one of the things that I like when that, about that text, about that scripture, the Bible indicates that all of us as children of God, as Christians, are to be blameless. Doesn't mean that we don't have faults, but you know what that means? That folk can't go around pointing the finger at you. Go back, yeah, go back around. So you know what that does? And I'm talking about having Jesus in the house. You know what that does? That means you have you are responsible for eliminating, giving them some ammunition to fight with. Oh, I, that didn't that didn't go well. You didn't get it. I tell you, I don't drink. I said, I don't, I don't drink no beer. But every day at 12 o'clock, you come by the liquor store, I'm coming out. <laughs> you don't see nothing, but you certainly start assuming. He ain't going there every day get no Coca-Cola, and he don't come out with one. And that means that we got to shun the very appearance. Yes. You, 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 you can't leave it for folk to say, or they must be, or he is the... No, you got to share the very appearance. How in the world can Jesus live in the house and you got the appearance of sin? He's not going to live there. 
You have to do everything you can. That's why he said, walk. And therefore, the, the writer in Deuteronomy said, you, got, you shall keep the commandments, walk in his way, and fear him. That's what folk ought to see us doing. Now, I know that's a struggle, but that's what we ought to be doing. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, good scripture. Paul says, as you therefore receive Jesus Christ the Lord, Walk in him. How many of us have received him? When did we receive him? He said, if you received him. Now maybe some of us may have missed him. He said, but as you therefore receive Jesus Christ, the Lord, walk in him. If you want your house to be a home, you have to walk in the Lord. Now, every one of us that walk in the Lord, there ought to be a testimony. Yes. Amen. Yes. There ought to be a testimony. And so, in John chapter 8, it says, If a man say, he, uh, keep, uh, uh, if a man say keep in my commandments, he shall never be tasted of death. Uh, Jesus said, that, he said, but if a man love me, he will keep my commandments. That's your testimony. Doesn't mean that you're not going to mess up. Lord knows if it meant that, I would never mess up. And all of these things that we're talking about moving to another level, moving from a house to a home, to moving from a house, that's a grave responsibility that uh, Jesus has placed on, the, on, on Christians. Our neighborhood, our neighbors, our friends, we should influence other members of the church. I am a child of God. My house is just not a house. My house is a home. You ever been to some people's place where you go in and you just feel the homey feeling? You know, maybe they make you have a home decor that makes you say, boy, this show is homey. Well, the love of God spreading in your house is your decor but, and, and it starts with you it, it radiates from you some folk you know that Christian you couldn't tell it's Christian unless they tell you because you wouldn't know by their speech you wouldn't know by their actions you wouldn't know by their behavior the only way you'd know that, that Christian is you, you'd have to go tell them and then some folk don't have enough evidence about being a Christian and be convicted of it. Those three, we have three ladies here, those three Caucasian ladies. One of them, Janice, all of you know, she was baptized. The other two are just her friends. The Lord is working on their heart right now. Those ladies went to a restaurant in Orange Park. That's the ones that um, our dear brother and sister White took us to this morning. Uh, we went to this same restaurant. These ladies, two of these ladies, not even members of the church. They sitting at the table talking about the church of Christ. They waitress come up. She hears them talking about the church of Christ. She gets involved. So yeah, I'm a member of the church of Christ too. I go to West Connect. They invite her to church. Sunday night, her and her husband were sitting right there. So the wives take us back today. I thought sis going to get fat. She spent all her time at the table talking about the church. And I know the Lord is working on their heart, on her heart, because we are, he's already been convicted, the husband. Just waiting on her. That's how God works. That's what I'm saying. When you people can tell when it ought to radiate from you. Not just when you indoors, but that ought to be our that ought to be that ought to be our calling card. People ought to be able to say, Don't you remember what they said about the disciples? Those folks, they said, These men are different. They've been with Jesus. They ought to be able to say that about us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If I if I house 
is going to be a home, folk ought to be able to talk like that about us. And then, then God's word ought to be binding. You know what that does? Bind and supports us in my weakness. That's what Jesus, uh, Paul wrote. He said, in our weakness, God is strong. In our weakness. Because I want to share this with you, brothers and sisters. As long as we're on the top side of the soil, we're going to have some weaknesses. And then, and then not only that, we continue. We don't have any reason as Christians, once we uh, hear God's word, we obey it. We make every effort to live it. We don't have any reason to be ashamed. I think one of the reasons that evangelism is not catching fire like it should. Some folks are ashamed to tell people about Jesus. We shouldn't be ashamed of Jesus. If we are ashamed of him in this life, he will be ashamed of us. He says, whosoever confess me before men, I will confess them before my father, which are in heaven. But if you deny me, I'm going to deny you. That ought to be our desire. A house is not a home without Jesus. Amen. And so we should do everything we can to lift him up. The writer says, when we lift him up, Jesus himself said, if you lift me up, I'll draw all men unto me. Not you. He draw them. And the proof, every day he shows us an example from somewhere. That's living proof. Them women sitting at the table talking about the church and Jesus and have no idea who the waitress is. And she comes in and joins in the conversation. The next thing you know, they done established a relationship. That's how God works. That's how God works. That might be, seem like a little thing. That's a big thing. That's a huge thing. That's, that's a blessing. And not only that, is that a blessing, right before these two ladies who have doubts about coming to, the, coming to be members of the body, not only was that a blessing to them, but it was a delight to them because now that influenced and encouraged their faith, even though they hadn't obeyed yet. But it encouraged them. The word of God. Is true. And all we have to do as the church. As members. Is take God at his word. Amen. Amen. You want to see God's greatest breath? Take him at his word. You said Lord. If I do certain things. That you would do it. Take him at his word. You can try him then, bro. You can try him. Bro, Victor, you can talk to him then. Lord, you said I'd be, if I'd be faithful, you'd take care of me. Take him at his word. And what was it Solomon said? Proverbs 3, 5. He said, trust in him with all your heart. And what? Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. And last but not least, I want to talk to you about a bona fide commitment. Somebody said, what's a bona fide commitment? It's not just saying I commit. Bona fide commitment is that you, you're wrapped in it. You, it it's your, you own it. Uh, we should, everything we do for the Lord Ought to be bona fide. All that means is ought to be real. Ought to be real. Everything we do, every every hymn we sing, every prayer we utter, everything we do ought to be the very best that we do. Because you know what? God gave us his best. The Bible says he gave us his only begotten son. And when he gave him, don't you remember on the, on, the, on the mountain with the other disciples when God told uh, those who were, were controversial, he said, this is my beloved son who I am well pleased. 
hear him. And so I'm pleading with us today. Just don't, let's take him at his word. Let's make the word applicable. Let's apply the word to us. Learning the word and making a, a more appropriately appropriate commitment is God's reward. There's a reward in that. Jesus said in John chapter 4 and verse 23 and 24. He said, but the owl cometh. It's here, church. It's here. He said, now it is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. And he's seeking such. He said, but God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I want to give a shout out to our preacher. He's been preaching. And he's been preaching in spirit and in truth. And for some folks, some of us who just sit there like everything we do, we ought to praise God. Every one of us in here, and if, if it's this, this doesn't fit you, you can raise your hand. We all family tonight. But every one of us in here have a reason to praise him. If you don't have a reason, I'll share some of mine with you. But every one of us have a reason. He woke us up this morning. We didn't deserve it. While we were asleep. And you know, I, I suffer from diabetes while we were asleep. He kept the blood running warm in my veins. He kept my heart in rhythm. Kept my, not one time during the night that I had to wake up to get my heart back in rhythm or try to reach. God done that. He stationed an angel by. And all night long, while I was wallowing and sleeping and snoring, he monitored me. But not just me. Many others. And I say that now with more conviction than I ever said it. You know why? Because every day, every day, I have time I get up and I, I tell somebody, I read the newspaper from Kentucky. I, re, I read Jacksonville. I read the Florida Times. I read a bunch. And I'll, every day, somebody has died of natural causes that is younger than I am. You don't think I have a reason to praise him? You don't think I have a reason to make a bona fide commitment to him? I have more than a reason to do that. And every one of us have more than a bona fide reason to get closer to God. Because he's been better to us than we have actually been to ourselves. Here we were bumping around in society, not knowing what was going on. And way before we were a gleam in our parents' eye, God had already decided that he was going to provide a way for us to be reconciled back to him. He sent his son to die a vicarious death for a wretch like me. Now, if, if we be honest, I don't think any of us actually deserved what God done with his son. We didn't deserve it. Now, and all of a sudden, now we have gotten ourselves in a position where we feel good. But no matter, there's nothing we could do to pay for what God has already done. Nothing we could do. And because he gave his only begotten son. So that you and I now. Can be rescued from ourselves. That's who we are. Yes. We all have a reason to praise him. We ought to be thankful. We ought to be willing to praise him. And, and, the, and uh, the scripture when David had to praise him in the morning. Praise him in the evening. Praise him in the we have a reason to praise him. 
And so if you're here tonight, and I want to say to our people live streaming, I want to apologize, but we're so grateful for you to be in a part of this tonight. We're so glad that you decided to be with us. And we're thankful for our audience here tonight. I appreciate you all coming. Uh, hopefully some, something was said that will cause you to think about this tedious journey that we travel as Christians. Yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. I want the Lord to just lead me, take over our home. We work very hard to do that, and we have to continue to do it. We have to fight the good fight of faith, because Satan is real. And unlike you, he doesn't give up. If he don't get you one way, he'll get you another. For sure, it's like water. He will always find your weakest point. You know, you can run water in a room and you'll know where the weakest point is when you see it running out. That way. Satan is the same way. If he don't get you today, he'll wait a day or two. You'll think he's gone. He's only, as the Bible calls it, he's only gone for a season. He'll be back. And every time he comes back, he comes back with vengeance. So if you're here tonight, if you're here on uh, live stream, uh, we want you to inbox us. Uh, let us know. Send us a text. We, if you, we'd, we'd like to meet you and talk with you and get to know you better. Uh, if you're here tonight in the audience, uh, all of us appear to have uh, be Christians, but perhaps Satan has just been too busy. He's about to upset the apple cart. Let me tell you, prayer changes things. That's the cliche that the world has. How little effort do we take advantage of that? We need to pray more. And if you can't pray him out, out of your way by yourself, let two or three more pray with you. That's how we move. That's the only way that we're going to move. God hears our prayers. And we can always confront him and say, Lord, you promised us. We can talk to him that way. If you hear, we hear God's word. We believe it, repent of our sins, confess Jesus, and we're willing to be buried in the water we grave for baptism with him. If you're here tonight and just need our prayer, I'm going to ask you to come. Together we're going to stand and sing the song of invitation. Careless soul, why will you linger wandering Linger. from the fold of God? God. Hear not the invitation, oh, and prepare to meet the God. Careless soul, oh, why the For your fire will, will soon be gone. Oh, I'll say to face the judgment, I'm prepared. 